everyone is in the room, make a joyful noise. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. We will sing around the world together. Thank you so much. Thank you. The new phase of ministry is where we'll be singing together around the globe. We were in Asaba. We were in Asaba last week, right? I'll be last two weeks. Pastor asked me to. So when they introduced pa um, DP, Pastor David Obwele, so he came and said a few times, then introduced his men who came and then, you know, so I was just, you know, in the you know. Amen. So when they, when they will bring me up the stage, I was also in it. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. Hallelujah. Let's give him the glory. Thank you. Give him the glory. He's in the room, remember? Honor him with your worship. Honor him with your praise. Give him the glory. Give him the praise and the worship. Thank him. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to Jesus, the Son of God. Glory be to him who was and is and is to come. Glory be to the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. The Bible said, when he purged our sins, he sat at the right hand of the Father. Give him the glory. He by inheritance obtained a more excellent name talking about Jesus give him the worship he tore the veil he broke the wall of partition he made both one give him the glory at time past as sundry God who spake to our fathers in diverse manners have spoken to us through his son is our voice again you who dwell in the light 
you who moves in light, you who speaks in light, you who walks in light. Grant us the access once again to illumination. Let your word come with energy of light, piercing every darkness, bringing us convictions, parting the walls, tearing the curtain. Let your glory descend again. Let Jesus be worshipped and be hallowed. We salute you once again for what you are set to do. We give you the glory. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Be seated. We have... A little work to do. You are welcome. James chapter 1 and verse 17. So we thank God for another month. I will connect what I'll be sharing with us shortly with how the month will be ending or rather how the year will be ending for us as a ministry. So along the line of the message, we will connect the focus of the month with today's discussion. Please pay attention for the Lord prepared something for you, especially for you. So, James said that every good and perfect gift, if you look at the context of this passage, that James was teaching on the context of asking and receiving. So because you remember that James began to talk about if anyone amongst you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. I think that should be in verse 5 or so of this chapter. Let's try verse 5. So James, yes, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and obey it not and it shall be given to him. So the context of James chapter 1 is the context of asking and receiving. After verses here, he now began to talk about the kind of wisdom that will have wisdom different from the wisdom of the world. And then he now jumped to verse 17 quickly. He now, in his summary of this chapter, he now said that you should be asking to God because every good and perfect gift coming down from where? from above not just from above because a lot of things can come from above demons also stay above are you, are you with me satan also stay above but we know that above get level right so the bible said it coming down from above from the father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning please give me your attention everyone so, um, James, in teaching us that when we ask, we receive, irrespective of tribe, tongue, height, and all of that, everyone can ask, everyone can receive, because God giveth even without looking at faces. Um, I don't want to digress. I don't want to digress. Um, but one thing I want to say is that when it comes to asking and receiving of this kingdom, I only know one thing that makes men to receive and makes men not to receive. And that one thing is faith. Not necessarily spiritual maturity. Are you with me? That's a topic on its own, so I don't digress. But I know that in asking and receiving from God, the thing I know the scripture teaches and emphasizes is what? Faith. If you believe, you shall do what? This is what Jesus consistently taught throughout his three and a half years of ministry. But that's not where I'm going. So, but we are focusing on James telling us to ask and receive of the Lord. Then, um, in telling us that we can receive from the Lord, he began to describe or give us an understanding 
as to where our answers will be coming from. Not just the where, but also from whom the answer will be coming from. Giving us or describing the nature of the one answering prayers. What I'm saying is very important to our discussion. So it matters a lot that we know the nature of the one answering our prayers because the nature of the one answering our prayers determines what he will be using to answer our prayers. Say amen. Are you here? Say amen. amen. So let's say you need money. Let's say you need money. You can meet many people. They can answer you as in giving you that money. But I can assure you, you can meet three different persons. They will give you that money in different ways. Do you agree with me? Are you sure? For example, I need money. I can give you cash. I answer your prayers. I need money. I can make a call. I say, hello, sir. Please, somebody will come to your office tomorrow morning. Please don't interview him. Employ him. I also gave you money. Is that correct? I can also give you money by telling you, sit down. You don't need money. You don't need job. Do this, do that, do the other one, and money will come. Now, are you here? So remember you needed money. One person gave you pepper. You still rejoiced. The other person referred you, maybe used his position, his status, his influence to give you a job you are not qualified or open the door and now you are now working and you are earning money. Or the person gave you a little tip from the bank of his wisdom and knowledge that will translate to money. Are you with me? So but people answer based on who they are and what they can do and what they have. So if you are in need of money and you meet the one that has money, he will give you money. If you are in need of money and you meet the one that has wisdom, knowledge that can translate to money, the person will give you wisdom, knowledge that can translate to money. If you need money and you meet someone, there are people, they don't have cash but they have contacts. Is it true? They, don't, they may not have one million dollars to give you, but they have contact that can give you billions. Is that correct? So, who you meet determines the kind of things you receive as an answer. I'm trying to teach you something on this scripture. That James said that God giveth good and perfect gifts. Say amen. But the God he's talking about is number one, a father. So being a father is also giving you an assurance that he's not a tyrant. I don't want to focus on the issue of fatherhood of God so we don't digress because I want to talk about light actually. So, but then he's not just a father. We know he's a father of love. In fact, the Bible says he's the father of all spirits. Father of lights. Father of love. So, but James is saying that is the father of lights. Amen? Not lights. Lights. Okay. Now, um, and with him no shadow of turning. Okay, let's take that scripture from a simpler version, possibly versions. Just stay with me. We are going somewhere. Today we bless you so much. Every desirable and beneficial gift comes from comes out of heaven the gifts are rivers of lights wow 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 there is no deceitfulness in god or deceitful in god nothing two-faced nothing fickle give another version just the nature of what i'm looking for in that scripture no rising or setting or shadow cast by his turning for his perfect and never changes Say amen. Maybe the Holy Ghost is still impressing this in my heart. Maybe I will need to say it. One of the deceits the enemy will give a New Testament believer 
is an impression that God answers your prayers based on performance. You heard me? Let me say it again. One of the greatest deceits the enemy can give to a New Testament believer is to give you an impression that your performance determines how God answers your prayers. Now, um, you have good days. You have bad days because you have emotions. You have days you feel I have done well. But if we are talking about father, and according to the principles and the teachings of Christ about fatherhood, you know that to be a father is to have an obligation. Is that correct? To have an obligation not dependent on performance. A duty. Are you with me? You must have this as a revelation or the enemy will torture you and give you an impression that the day you didn't do this well, God will not answer your prayers. I have always said this, that the greatest thing you receive from God, you don't even pray about them. The greatest thing that God does to you, you don't even fast about them. You don't even speak in tongues one about the flow. Even the day you messed up, the answer still came. Sometimes we shy away from this because we supposedly don't want to give license to licentiousness. But the truth is this. God is a father. Say amen. Who goes sin, goes sin. Whether you teach God as a father or God as a tyrant. Who goes sin, goes sin. Now, the Bible said here, that God is the father of light. So rest, let us remove father and said, God and come down from the source and sustainer of lights. Because the meaning of father is what? Source and what? Sustainer. So father does not mean gender male. If I say this now, so many men will fight me. <laughs> Lord, help me in Jesus' name. Okay, let me say it this way. If you leave your role for someone you call the other gender as a man, and the person, that gender you call female, is playing the role of a man, maybe I should stop here. Do you understand? I will stop here. Just complete the statement. So it simply means you have done what? Like Esau, you have done what? People, the people don't know many ways they sell their birthright. So when you leave your role as a father, in fact, Paul taught this that when as a father you fail to provide, what happens to you? You are what a what? an unbeliever. So the point I'm making is that fatherhood is not just male gender and female gender. That may be so, biologically speaking. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not so. Never so. That is why a woman can be your father in the Lord. Not auntie in the Lord. Ah. Huh? Let's not go there. I know I will confuse you. Let's not go there. From the source of light with whom is no variableness. My last point here before I show you other scriptures and then we'll flow is this. Say amen. amen. So because God is the God of light and James was putting this scripture in the context of asking and receiving. Here is the summary of of what James is trying to communicate. James is saying something like this. If anyone is in need, let him ask. Because every good and perfect gift cometh down from above, from the source and sustainer of light. James is trying to let you know that every good and perfect gift, if it is from God, it will come from, it will come as light. 
Are you here? Remember my analogy before. That you needed money, but you met three kinds of men. One will give you cash. The other will give you contact. One will give you knowledge. They answered your prayers, meeting the same need with different means. Are you sure you follow what I'm saying? So James is saying that if it is God who will answer your prayer, he will give you good gifts. I have taught you here over time that nothing is too good for a believer. Let nobody lie to you about that. The very good of the land belongs to you. Can I hear your amen? amen. Let's continue. So, but the point I'm making here is that if the answer is coming from God, the answer will not come as a cash. It will come as a light. Are you here? Because the one you are asking determines what you will receive. So James is telling you, he is the source of light. So, when I am asking God for money, what will God give me? Thank you very much for getting me now. When I am asking God for a wife, what will God give me? Good. So when I am asking God for a husband, he will give me light. When I am asking God for a new shop, in fact, anything you are asking God, how many of you know that even power is light? Habakkuk 3, 3 and 4. That the hiding place of God's power is called light. Let me say it again and don't forget this. Everything, how many things? Everything God will ever give you the earlier you understand this, the better. And don't you think what I'm saying is simple? Because many people will pray and receive answer. But because they don't know the form and the shape, their answer comes like or looks like. They will receive an answer but still be waiting for an answer. You have heard me say here consistently that prayer is man asking God. Light is God answering man. I am asking God. Light, God is answering me. And when you don't know this, you will fast and pray. God will answer you. Because you are thinking in the form of paper and I need money. You don't know that when God gives life, he has given everything. Every good and perfect gift come down from above. From the Father or from the source and sustainer of lights in plural. So, when I'm in need of protection, God answers me through light. Johnny Mercy, he answers me through light. Give me anything God will give you. If you know any man who has encountered God, any form of encounter comes as a light. Whether you are Moses, burning bush, whether you are um, Joshua, whether you are Gideon, whether you are Apostle Paul on your way to Damascus, anyone who has encountered Jehovah encountered light. Say amen. God have no cash to give you. God will have numerous light to give you. When you ask him for anything, give me wisdom, he gives you light. Give me knowledge, he gives you light. Empower me, he gives you light. Connect me, he gives you light. Every good and perfect gift come down from above, from the source and the sustainer of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Let me give you a few scriptures as we begin to fly. Glory be to God. Matthew chapter 6. Okay, before Matthew, let's look at 1 Timothy 6, 16 quickly. Matthew, uh, 1 Timothy 6, 16. If you can see, read with me. Who only had immortality, dwelling aware and light. So immortality has a place he dwells in light right let's not go there which no man can approach unto only man cannot approach whom no man has seen no man can see <laughs> nor can see 
to whom be honor and power everlasting. Glory be to God. If you remember one of the things we have had on this scripture, I have taught you about this scripture. When the Bible said that no man can see God, it is true. It is true. But only no man, God can see God. Are you with me? Moses said, I want to see you. Moses, you cannot see me. If you see me, you will die. Which means before you will see me, I will kill you. And then you will see me. Only dead men can see God. Are you with me? So what do I do? I'm going to hide you in the clefts. And I will pass by you. And you will see me. Question. How can a man hidden in a cleft see? What is clay? What is, what is cleft? In a rock. I will hide you in a rock. And I will pass. But when I hide you in a rock, you can now see me. Because no man can see me. You know what I'm saying? So, nobody will ever see God and live. So, the humanity in us must die for us to see God. But that's a different topic altogether. The point here is that we have a God who dwells in light. You live in street, God lives in light. Say amen. Please say amen again. If someone asks you, where can we find God? In light. He dwells in light. He dwells in light. Matthew 6, 22. <laughs> what a service. I'm laughing. Can you see? Let's read together. Everyone want to go? Light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, shall the other one? The whole body. Now we are stepping down to our discussion for the afternoon. So we have discussed that God answers us by giving us light. I will not emphasize that's not where we are going. Here is my emphasis for today. If God answers men by giving them light, my assignment this afternoon, are you with me? My assignment this afternoon is to help you understand that the way God clothes men is to make sure that our whole body will be full of light. Matthew 6, 22 is showing us that it is possible for someone's part of the body to have light. So your head can be lightened up while your feet remain in the dark. Possible. Possible. Your body can be clothed with light while your head is empty of light. Very possible. Your feet can be in light, but your head is lacking light. Very possible. But it is a possibility that your whole body will be what? Please shout my body. Say my whole body is full of light. Can I hear your amen? amen? Chapter 12 of Revelation. We are doing Bible study. Step down. Yes, look at this. Are you with me? And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with what? Sun, number two, and what? Moon under her, and upon her head was what? I hope you know that this is the three kinds of light Paul taught about. Light of the sun, light of the moon, and light of the what? Of the stars. First Corinthians 15. Now, John saw a vision. He said, I saw a woman clothed with light. Remember Matthew 6, 22, that when your eye is single, your whole body. And I said a few minutes ago that someone can have part of his or her body full of light, the other part full of darkness. It can exist in one person. In this area you are enlightened. In this area, the same way you can have A in chemistry and F in what? You tell us. Tell us your own. You what? The same you. Okay, what about is your own? The same you. A, excellent. F. What happened? In chemistry, you have light. In further mass, darkness. The same you. 
the same thing applies spiritually. Someone can have light in this area, full of darkness in this area. Are you with me? Mm. Light in his or her face, darkness in his pocket. Is it possible? Yes. You are glowing like you are glowing. Shining. But darkness is in the dark. But this is a Sabbath. The angel of light will walk in here. I will tell you when. I will tell you when. But the point I'm making in this service is this. That Jesus wants to clothe the whole body with light. John said, I saw a woman. I have thought on this scripture. The woman here means the church. Not gender. I saw the church. If you meet your real self in the spirit, this is the original clothing given to man before the fall. When we were naked, so to say, what we lost, you call glory is light. I hope you, you are not here. I hope you know that what you call glory has two definitions. One is weight. Two is light. Just these two. Glory means weight and light. So the Bible said, I saw a woman clothed with sun, but her head was not empty. Her head was crowned with stars, but her feet weren't empty. Her feet decorated with moon. What a wonder. What a wonder. Listen to me. The dragon of this end time comets. The people that would prevail over the dragon are people decorated with light. For this woman to face the dragon coming after her, she must be equipped. Jesus is giving us a picture that my end time church will be clothed again. Oh, Paul said, I long for our heavenly body. I persuade myself and I press hard. I long. That should be 2 Corinthians or so. Say, I am longing to put away this earthly tabernacle. Say, I want to put on my heavenly tabernacle. The heavenly garment of a believer is not white robe. The white robe you saw in the book of the scriptures is talking about righteousness. But our real garment, Kalatosi Labaha. When we shall put up this body, Paul said, at the last trump, something will happen. He said that immortality will swallow up mortality. Now you understand 1 Timothy 6. He said we have life dwelling in immortality. Paul said that immortality will swallow up mortality. He's talking about at the last trump, light will descend. And when the light will come, it will swallow up darkness. Real believer, you are real dressed well when you have light sun on your body crowns of stars on your heads and moon you stand upon say with me again with anger my body is full of light John saw three but I will show you four in fact there are actually five areas but I will zero it down to four very quickly four areas that light must enter your life this afternoon this is my assignment remember God answers through lights remember remember so if you ask me there are five areas but i'm gonna be steady staying on only four, four these are four areas john saw three because you know how it works we see in parts so he only saw three but i'm gonna be adding one from what john saw here your body must be clothed your head must be clothed your feet must be clothed please say amen Hallelujah. So let's travel. The first area or the first place, the light of God must come into your life. That's where we are going now. I think I'm done with my little introduction. Proverbs 20, 27. We'll keep reading that scripture. We'll keep reading it. Let's, oh, we're not there. 
the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The first area that your life must command light, the first area God must clothe, is a place I call, or the Bible will call your inner man. The first place in your life that must be enlightened, everybody give me your attention. The first place, like you are dressing up physically, there are things you put on before you put on the other one. Is that correct? I am sure you don't wear your shoe, footwears, before your clothes. Do you do that? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. So you put on your, and you sometimes you have what you call underdress, right? Your singlet is under. Am I correct? Now, in order of priority, the f I don't care any other area you're receiving light. If your inner man is in the dark, my brother, you are in the dark. You can have crown of light in your head. Your feet can carry light. You can be knowledgeable, sound intellectually. But once your inner man is uncivilized, you are in the dark. In order of priority, the clothing of a believer starts with clothing the believer's inner man. Say amen. Believers are not the only people that has inner man. Unbelievers do. But their own is in the dark. Their own is dead. Who is a Christian? One whose inner man has been quickened. And you has he quickened and made those seats. Please say amen. Are you with me? Stay with me everybody. In order of priority, the proof that you are getting enlightened is because your inner man has sufficient light has been clothed with the sun glory be to God your head cannot carry sun that woman I showed you in the scripture I will keep reminding the, the, the woman your head your feet cannot carry the sun only your inner man your inner man oh Kaba how many of you You've had a dream before. Maybe in your dream, you saw yourself doing mighty things like carrying a building. Something you know in the physical you cannot even dare. You saw yourself in a dream carrying big things. Or you saw a giant in a dream. And with one hand, you are beating the giant. Has it happened to me before? Huh? Or you only dream where they are pursuing you. It's also a sign. Huh? Huh? They're not here. How many of you have dreamt where they are beating your hands down in a dream? Don't lie. Don't raise your hand. Huh? Two of them are indicators. One is saying that even though you look skinny in the flesh, but you are strong or your inner man. One is saying, even though you have macho in the outward, but your inner man is weak. Amen. Have you watched a movie where someone died and the same person left that body? Ah, huh? that is not just a movie. You are not here. Ah, huh? do you remember Peter? Acts twelve. Why they were praying for Peter? Peter appeared knocking on the door, and the little girl went and said, "Who is there? I am Peter." They went back and said. Peter is and said, no, Peter cannot be here. It must be the other Peter. Because they believe, as you are looking at me like this, ba, you have another you looking like this. Huh? This is true. The one that will go to hell and heaven is not this one. This one is food for the dust. The one that will go to heaven and to hell is not this one. Please say glory. Every one of us possess inner man. We have inner man. The spirit of the Lord of man is the candle of God. Listen to me. Everything that happens to your outer man happens to your inner man. Your inner man can be hungry. 
Your inner man can be filled. Your inner man can be joyous. Your inner man can be sad. Your inner man can be strong. It can be weak. Your inner man can be naked. It can be clothed. Are you with me? In fact, your inner man can be pregnant. What do you call prophecy? The inner man is the only place you can nurture, carry, incubate prophecy. Everything that happens to the outer man happens to the inner man. Except one thing, inner man cannot die. Hi. It's not too hard. Say I can be clothed. Inner man. Inner man. The real civilization is civilization of the inner man. The real education is education of the inner man. The real growth is the growth of the inner man. The real mentorship is the mentorship of the inner man. Do you know why? The inner man is the only place in your tripartite being that connects directly to God. Every other part of you is a mere channel. God can speak to your inner man. Your mind is a processing place where you process what happens to your inner man. While your body is a place where you give expression of what you process in your mind. If you process wrongly, your body will give it wrong expression. Somebody, are you with me this evening? I'm telling you, as you are seated here, wearing whatever you are wearing, whether native, whether corporate, the same way your inner man is seated somewhere, I don't know where, looking at you like this. Are you with me? How you will order food and you are eating and your flesh is happy, but your inner man says, Hi, I am hungry, I'm thirsty, just that I don't need rice. I don't need beans. Look at how you will sew a garment. Call your tailor. And the person will measure you. And give you a wonderful outfit. But while you are dressing gorgeously. Moving out. Receiving applause. Your, your outfit looks so beautiful. And you are happy. And you have this little, little pride. Oh, thank God. But somehow you have pride. Say amen. The same way your inner man. He'll be saying, where will you call me? And call the one who made me. And measure out the kind of garments I need. The first place that needs to be lightened up is your inner man. Many of us, the defeat we have on the outward is simply because our inner man is weak. Our inner man is empty. So this is a service we are trusting the Lord. That light will enter your inner man. Shekora bazina koma grande leto mavahada kakora te bahana. Many persons are 30 years in the flesh, but they are still three months in their inner man. Their inner man is still a toddler, a baby. You are still in crutch in your inner man. But your outer man graduated. Now you have MSc, BSc, PhD. And you're pushing to becoming a prof. I'm coming to the second level. But listen to me. I don't care how you advance outwardly. I am only concerned about how you advance spiritually. Because the true texture and quality of a man is not how you advance here. I don't care. Remember what I said before. God does not care how you advance with light in any other part of your body until your inner man advances. Can I hear your amen? amen. Please say a good amen. amen. So this inner man thing does not actually carry some fantasy and some, it doesn't tickle fancy. Do you know why? I am not talking about your physical appearance. If I'm talking about your outward man, you have been shouting by now. Oh, you have car. Because the outward man needs comfort, needs car. Big house is coming. The outward man will rejoice. But I can tell you what I'm saying now. Your inner man is saying, please say it louder. Because many of us, you are real size. It's your size in the realm of the spirit. And I asked myself a question while preparing this sermon. I said, how old am I 
in the spirit? How strong is my inner man? I ask myself this question. How strong, how civilized, how educated is this man talking to you this afternoon? Talking about my inner man. I want to show you something. I don't think I'm, I'm closing now. Just stay with me. Huh. Ephesians 3 and verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. Verse 16. Verse 16 now. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory. Take away glory according to the riches of his light. To be strengthened with might where? By his spirit where? Inner man can be weak. Inner man can be weak. Inner man can be weak. The energy to power through fasting cannot come by the flesh. Inner man needs strength. Are you with me? You're not here. Are you with me? <laughs> January will soon come. December is here. Where we'll do retreats and all kinds of things. 21 days, 7 days, 14 days, 40 days. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read that. These are things we do by the flesh. But you will discover when the jungle mature, what the flesh is proposing. The spirit man lacks the strength to carry it out. How many persons have given money in the church? Call that money they will give out. But their inner man lacks energy to do it. I will do this. I'm talking about it doesn't matter what to do in the flesh. If might is not supplied by the spirit Spirit to your inner man, you are very weak. It doesn't matter how you jump and shout in the church, result will show, and it will show in a very embarrassing way. Listen, you can fed the outward man, you can fed the inner man. A poor man may dress gorgeously. You can dress above your means on the outer man, but not on the inner man. On the inner man, if it is not there. It is not there. If you are weak on the inner man, it will show. You can't camouflage it. Satan will come. The dragon will come looking for the child. And on that day, it will be obvious that this one sound bogus on the outside. But the inner man is so weak. So tonight, we are asking the Lord, let your light shine on our inner man. What beings is to my outward man, light is to my inner man. What balance diet does to my body, the light of God is the instrument in the hand of God that can clothe a man from the inside. May your inner man be strengthened. Please say a good amen. The pursuit in dream by demons and angels of darkness is simply because you are in a man is weak. I think I need to rush. How do we civilize the inner man? How do we educate the inner man? Listen to me. It doesn't matter what you, what you have in Christ. It doesn't matter where we are placed in Christ. It doesn't matter what you ought to do in, in Christ. Once you are inner man is uneducated, every promise of God in Christ will never find expression. I need to repeat this. It doesn't matter what you are designed to do in God. It doesn't matter what you are designed to have in God. Once your inner man is not civilized, you will never fulfill your potentials in Christ is at the mercy of the civilization of the inner man. Until you educate your inner man, your true identity in Christ will not manifest. I'm saying something so deep. Listen everywhere. Why do we go to school? I send my kids to school. Why? I want them to be civilized intellectually. Why do we educate our inner man? We educate our inner man for one singular purpose. To find their true identity in Christ. You might need to write it down. We educate our inner man. We bring light. We shine light to our inner man. We strengthen our inner man so that our inner man, we know and receive understanding as to their true potential, their true identity in Christ. Powerful.
powerful. I learn Igbo for my mind. I learn English, biology, chemistry for my mind. My inner man goes to school. The school, I will tell the school they go to. But the purpose of educating our inner man is that they will know their true identity in Christ. Because your mind cannot comprehend the full potential of our identity in Christ. Some things and who we are in Christ is too big for our mind to comprehend. Please say amen. There are things if I begin to say here about who we are in Christ. Many of you here will pick up stone. You want to stone me. Do you know why? The carnal man cannot understand the things of the Spirit. Remember, and I will come there shortly, that no man knoweth the things of a man save the Spirit of that man. The reason why you must educate your inner man is that only your inner man has the potential the ability to receive education as to your true identity in Christ. Please shout light. Say it louder. Again better. Educate my inner man, oh God. We are so much but we are doing so little. We have so much but we command so little. Potentially we are gifted, but we manifest so little. I pray, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family and on earth and in heaven is named, that he will grant to according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit on your inner man. Give me Second Corinthians 4 and verse 6. Don't be tired. Make sure you are not tired. Identity. Identity. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our where? The heart there means what? Inner man. Shine in our inner man. To give that inner man the light. May I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. May you not be an illiterate in the spirit. May your inner man receive civilization. Oh, this is powerful. God who commanded the light of God to shine out of darkness. May this be my testimony. May this be your testimony. Shine in our spirit, in our inner man. To do what? Not to give us money. Not to give us car. The light of God in the heart of a man is for a singular purpose. Just one. Just one. Not many things. To give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. The glory of God in the presence of Jesus Christ. There must be an interface between my spirit and that of Christ. There must be a meeting point. So, the same way you are sent to school to be developed intellectually, you are sent to the school of the spirits. And the school you go to is the school of Christ or the school of lights. Every day you attend this class, they will begin to educate your spirit. They will begin to lecture your spirit. They will begin to with your spirit you think you are strong wait until you interface with the light of the glory of the Lord of Christ he said in the face of Jesus Christ may the light of Jesus shine in your heart again <laughs> you won't understand what I'm saying today until we are done and you go and practice this you will never be strong until your inner man is strong you will never be powerful. You will never do anything great until your inner man is educated. A lot of preachers we preach, but our inner man is an illiterate. Many of us that claim to be Christians, our inner man is weak. It doesn't eat a butter. It doesn't drink anything. It doesn't take water in the physical. Everything you eat on the outward, your inner man has something that looks like that. They drink water, but not physical water. They eat food, but not physical food. Oh, that the light of 
God that shine out of darkness. The same light will shine into my heart to give me the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Ah! How do I know that my inner man is receiving real food? Like real food. I know it when I know who I am. Identity is one and one the only way me I know how we can trace is not by shouting boldly I hope you know somebody can be bold very bold and audacious physically but timid spiritually do you know someone can be sounding audacious making bold statements but the person would chicken at when jungle mature do you know why the person talking is not the real person until you talk from your spirit you are making noise until you speak from your inner man you are a noise maker anything your mouth utter independent of your inner man is a mere noise making i don't care how loud you are let there be no rain nor dew mouth said it but spirit commanded it if you say it quietly it will still happen a man is not powerful because you are loud on the outwardly you are powerful because your inner man has educated your mind i'm coming there shortly but before there i am telling you if you are someone seated here and you joke with your inner man you are joking with destiny you are joking with life when we teach you here what do you think we do every sunday you are coming to school we are educating your inner man the reason why you still have some things to have is simply because your inner man has not been educated enough identity crisis in the life of a believer is the clearest proof me i know that you have not received this light that can shine into a man's heart giving the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ somebody will ask me how do you know I have identity crisis there are many things we can use to know that the man is yet to know who he is who she is in Christ I repeat what I said before it doesn't matter your height it doesn't matter your size what matters is the civilization given to your inner man I will tell you how if I stop here, we will pray. But this inner man thing, bah, I don't want us to become noise makers, but light weighted in the, in the spiritual realm. Talking so boldly, but commanding little or no result. How do we know you have been educated spiritually when you know who you are in Christ? And I'm telling you, identity crisis for me, for me, is the clearest proof that a man that the woman is yet to be educated in the things of the spirit. Before you conclude this message, let me remind you, there are many ways we know that a believer is suffering from identity crisis. One of them is fear. Meanwhile, before I come there, before I come there, maybe I tell you this, I will not spend much of the time here, but you might need to know this. When we say identity of a believer, what do we actually mean? When we say that a believer must be taught and educated who you are in Christ. Who you are in Christ in tells three things. Number one, where who you are in tells three things. Number one, are you ready? Are you sure? Who we are, where we are, what we can do. You get your true identity by three things. One, who we are, we are one with Christ. Two, where we are, we are seated with him. What we have, we can do. What we can do, we can do all things. Say amen. Your identity can be traced to what I just said now. Every defeat every the real education is this that identity Kaba. 
you must capture three things in you know in knowing who you are in Christ. Number one, who is this person? Say amen. I just looked at my because I learned a lot. One of my kids, I looked at one. Something came to my heart. I said, This guy is Ashu Nobu. Like that. From Enugu State, like that. From my local government, like that. From my village, like that. Amen? So, if there are baggages from Obu, from where I come from, you will now associate them to this innocent child simply because I gave birth to him. Are you here? Just like that. Meanwhile, trying to interpret this innocent child from where he's coming from simply means you don't know this child. Are you with me? Because these things, he's just an evil man like that because an evil man gave it to him. Are you with me? So it will be wrong of you to look at a man and interpret him by the flesh. From now on, henceforth, we know no man after the flesh. These are the kinds of food your inner man eats. And you can look at a man, a woman, a lady, and refuse to interpret him based on where he's coming from and his or her experiences. I'm trying to tell you, there is another man that came from God. This one you can see came from the woman that married a man from one village and they produced this one. If the only thing you know about you is that one a woman gave birth to, prepare for defeat. But you must know you beyond flesh and blood. Beyond a tall guy and a brief guy. Before a fair lady and a dark lady. You must know you beyond flesh and blood. Jesus refused in his life to be associated. She, he respected Mary, respected Joseph. But you go and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus refused to be associated with anything that is related to who gave birth to him, his earthly siblings. Sometimes it seems as if that Jesus is going to ask him, Jesus, your mama is here. Your younger siblings are here. Who get mama? My own ma. I no get mama. Now people here be my mama. He's not trying to tell you not to honor your mother. He's passing a message. Don't define me by who get birth to me. Don't define me by my earthly siblings. He's not teaching you dishonor. Go and check the scriptures. Everywhere, if you want to attribute anything from the flesh to Jesus, he will rebuke you immediately. He was consciously guarding the other one. We know one given to, to um, uh, um, given to birth by Sister Mary. We know the one that sucked the breast of Mary. But no said, don't call me a Benjamite. Don't Light. Our citizenship is not of this world. Though in the world, not of this world. If you don't know this, they will tell you that Nigeria is your heritage and the economy in this nation will supply what you need. No, no, no. We came here to make here better. We are not from here. Are you hearing what I'm teaching this evening? We are not from here. We came to this part of the world to make here better. There was a man sent from God. His name is Danubu. He can come from anywhere, but that man came from God. So when I close my eyes to pray, the one that came from God is talking to God. When I open my Bible to read, the one that came from God is interacting with God. When I speak in tongues, what do you think I am of where you come from? This is why a guy can type rubbish and define you. How can they know you? A believer is a mystery. Listen to me. This gay thing, lesbian thing, is a simple thing. Identity crisis. If you know who you are, how can you fall in love with a man being a man? It's just a pure mere identity crisis.
crisis in a big one hear me we must educate a generation to let them know beyond what i read i came from a realm this is why anytime you have a challenge your first thought on how to solve it is from the earthly, earthly, earthly realm but i came to tell you tonight that we are not just here we are here as a people that descended from above glory be to god how do i know you are yet to catch up with who you are in christ number one identity crisis manifests in many ways i chip in only three one is fear when you are afraid you are yet to know who you are anytime you're seeing fear in your life educate your inner man ask god for light on your inner man fear of death fear of who will marry me are you aware many sisters are afraid they may not marry i will pause and i will say this one many ladies are afraid what if i did not marry that fear alone can prolong your years to three four more years how dare you think like that how dare you think like that you mean a king can fashion a product and lack customers that our daughters be polished after the similitude of a palace you mean a king will market a product and other kings will not come the reason why you are thinking that you and you don't know who you are fear of identity crisis am i sure they like my nose look at me and i'll tell you this if you want to walk on your weight as a lady walk on your weight because you want to be strong and fit to serve god not because you want to be sharp and attract men if you're walking on your weight that men will like you, like you it is a sign of identity crisis you should not be working on yourself so you could attract men i know i am not saying what you want to hear but listen to me fear is a product you don't know who you are i will die i will die christmas is coming what if i am dry i am not saying don't be careful but tell me a man who is always afraid i'll show you someone who is suffering from identity crisis you will need lights it is more than preaching open down my eyes to understand who i am how can you kill a spirit you don't threaten a dead man with death a believer is the one who died to death and resurrected with life you cannot we don't die we only change position and it that to die no longer afraid of death many of you here you are afraid of making money will i make it will i get a job you are still writing jump but you are afraid of the job you will get five years ago five years to come who do you this you are yet to understand that the earth is of the lord and the fullness thereof the word and they that dwell therein nah, man. when you are educated in the spirit you sit down and laugh sometimes no prayer you are laughing they won't know what is giving you joy how can a guy summarize your destiny with a fake ring china ring china ring that will fade out in three weeks and a guy wants to regulate your destiny by putting a ring and calling you and saying i am not doing it again and they said depression you should pull out the ring keep it and say, glory now i have time to do the work of god now i have time to listen to me when you know this nobody the next time you're dressing to look good don't dress for any boy no man should make you dress in a certain way dress because you're a daughter of a king you want to look good for your king 
for your father, not for a boy. Do you know why? If your dressy were to catch the attention, the one you want to get his attention has been gotten by somebody else. Don't try to please anybody. Look good for your maker. Look good for yourself. No man should bully you into trying to look in a certain way. Say, I know who I am. You are not saying it. You are not saying it. So come and say, I know who I am. Nobody, if you're fat, you flourish, for they shall be fat and they flourish. Listen to me. If you are slim, for my queen shall be like the aloe tree. It's in your scripture. Let no man bully you for rubbish. Listen to me. You are the way you are by the way your mother made you. Identity crisis will shrink fear out of you. You want to please him and please her. Yeah. Today you wear hair. Today you wear flat. Today you put this hair. Not because you like the hair. You want to get the attention of one man who is confused as you. No! You are not just a human being, wonderful and fearfully made. Carry yourself this way. Talk this way. Believe this. They will call it pride, but no problem. You know your words. That's why you marry any half person. Is he marriage? Please come now. Ah! Not me. <laughs> Queens are made for kings alone. Alone. Fear is an indication that your inner man is lacking knowledge, lights. You need to be civilized. Second thing, your attitude to rejection. Attitude to reject. I'm giving you indices. What shows that you are yet to grab who you are? Because my work tonight is to challenge you. Now, now I know why Paul will pray. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of our inheritance we need to know this it is not taught it can only be given by revelation are you hearing what i'm teaching you kai you look at pastor nick them no legs no hands but they are bouncing on stage and they will pity you with hands they'll be telling you, how, how do you guys cope with hands? Like they're pitying in you. Huh? How do you guys cope with legs? This is burden. Like they are happy with no hands, no legs. And so you are going for plastic surgery of nose. The flat one is the one God likes. God liked it flat. You want to make it pointed nose, you will lose your nose, my sister. Plastic surgery everywhere, here big, here there. Let me, let me. Can you fetch your hair? Where are we? Eh? In our Holy Ghost, help me in Jesus' name. Don't try to please anybody. This is me telling you that God never made any mistake. Never made any mistake. Never. You want to please men? You can never do that. So the second thing that shows that you have issue with an identity body, living or dead, who received rejection like Jesus Christ. I don't know anybody. He came to his own people and he did what? The worst rejection is when the people you love rejects you. Huh? That is the worst. You can cook rubbish. Others can say you cooked rubbish but not your loved ones. Huh? You are starting a business. People can criticize but you expect at least a pat on the back from your loved ones. Now you're trying. Keep it up. At least cheer calls from your loved ones. Jesus 
international ministry worldwide registered the first people that attack the ministry his own the second people that should receive his ministry are supposedly spiritual heads heads the pharisees the sadducees the sahendris teachers of the law because this man is a spiritual man at least other pastors should encourage me and give me a hand of fellowship so for this one the people say hey lord jesus keep coming oh young man keep coming they picked up stone they called him controversial they say he was heretic in fact they say he has a demon this man abba the whole world turned against him each time I look at the four synoptic gospel, I keep saying, what kind of identity is this? The man talking to you is the bread of life. I am the light of the world. Without me, you can do nothing. Without me? Huh? See? He said that this thing you are saying, that this thing you are saying, prophet, I am the one the prophet you are talking about, talked about. Who are you? How old are you? The Moses you claim gave, I am the Lord Moses gave you. Huh? You search the scripture thinking that in them you will find life. I am the scripture you are reading. Hey! Identity well intact. Well intact. If you don't know this, men will talk you into many shapes. Today you are this. Tomorrow you are this. Next tomorrow you are this. You keep becoming everything. Because when I look at you, what I want you to be, may not be what you may want you to be. But when you look at the one who made you, I say, let the light of the glory of God that shone in darkness shine in my heart. To give me the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Your attitude to rejection is a clear proof whether you know who you are or not. I hope you know you can start up a business and the first 10 persons you will tell about the business will laugh you to hell. Huh? Then we will know whether you believe in what you are doing or not. Rejection, how you handle rejection is a proof whether you have mastered this demon called identity crisis. How can that noble want to be a girl? How? Like what? Please give, keep your girl woman nature. Keep it. Don't dash me. Keep it forever and ever. How can you, a daughter of Zion, want to be a man? How? Should we do debates? Attitude to rejection. Five men proposed and talked trash. Move on. What I say? With your face straight. But I am hot. Don't let it last 24 hours. But I'm depressed. Make sure it will not, it will not cross the daybreak. Make sure. By all means. Move on. You will think I am joking, but you will need this message. Rejection. Rejection. You are not good enough. You are opinion, sir. God bless you. We move. You are not qualified. God bless you. Maybe I'm motivated to be more qualified. But you cannot dampen. You cannot play games with who I am. I have a quality not made in China. I know who I am. 10,000 no's can mean 1 million years somewhere. Are you with me? Your attitude to rejection. The greatest of all, you may not have heard this. How do we know that you are suffering from I? Identity crisis is your attitude to people's success. Hmm. 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 This one is deep. I'll stop here. How do we know you are suffering from identity crisis? The, the third one, your attitude to people's success. Make sure your neighbor is listening. Make sure your neighbor is listening. Say amen. Get 
Let me start with young ministers coming up. I know you don't know you. When you look at the success, the glory of someone's head ministry and start feeling inferior is a clear sign we don't know you. Are you with me? You start to feel inferior, envy, jealousy, backbiting, murmuring. These things you call, whatever name you call them, but these are signs that you don't really know who you are. Your attitude to people's success shows us how healthy your knowledge of who you are is. Believe this message. When you know you, you are not threatened by anyone's progress. Eh? 10,000 members in Kingdom Invaders mandate does not mean that FDM members are missing. Eh? In fact, if there are people in FDM that join to make up the 10,000 members, they are never in FDM before. Are you with me? This issue of this person is taking my members. You don't know you. Taking your members, which one do you die for? Which one did you die for on the cross? Tell me the one you died for. How many of them? Your attitude to people's progress shows us how healthy the knowledge of who you are is. Nobody married your husband, rest and, and sleep. No one married your wife and I began, I am eyeing, I am eyeing her. Eyeing her as what? As your daughter? As one you created? As what? I paid her fees and so what? Somebody gave birth to her. How much do you pay? Let's balance you your money. Bring your receipts. Are you with me? She married my girl. My issue is that my, capital my, how come is yours? Who gave you? God married him. A woman gave birth to her. Your attitude to people's success shows us how healthy the knowledge of who you are is. You think I am joking, right? Somebody got a job of 10 million every month. It should not threat. Nobody's success should threaten you. Nobody. Nobody. Don't be threatened. Came back from Asaba last week. And Odogu there, Pastor Ike, did a massive meeting. Over 35 million naira for three days meeting. Over 35 M. Bro, this is money. This is money. Three days meeting, 35 million naira. So I should come here and start putting myself. Oh, my man. You know, go happen. Me, I know my call. I know my anointing. I know my assignments. I know my limits. I am doing well depending on that which God has given me. 35 million meeting does not demean what I am doing. You should be healthy enough to know that no one's success is blocking your view. The sky is too wide for two birds to collide. Be healthy knowing who you are. Nobody makes all the money in the whole world. How much do you want? Ten trillion dollars. Ego Kadinoboda. We still have enough money. The earth is too rich. It can accommodate all of us. Somebody is dating a girl and you are dying in your room. Make sure you be allowed to attend the wedding before they bury you before your time. What is your own? The girl said no to you. It does not change you. You only miss your luck, not me. You said no to me. You are the one losing. I'm going my way. Bye bye. And I wish you well, oh. I wish you well. No, no, no. Are you getting me now? No, no. I wish you well. Say no to me. I will take away sleep. How? Yeah. 
Many of you drag rubbish, drag nothing. The girl told you I'm hooked up. In a, in a, And even sisters, they are laughing now. Claiming somebody's, bo somebody's son. Confronting fellow ladies for rubbish. How can you be dragging one person? Abba, over seven billion on earth and counting. And you're dragging one local boy. Who do you this? Are you still here? A dragon. A dragon. Now, if you focus on your husband, you're focusing on a guy. Not choir. <laughs> Not choir. We are spiritual in this house. Say amen. We are born again and we are spiritually sound and the Holy Ghost filled. Say amen. Nobody will take your place. Nobody. If you take one, you still have many. Our eyes are strengthened up. When you know this, you will know that your life depends on Jesus. I understand we need men, but nobody should play God in your destiny. Nobody should play God in your destiny. Are you with me? So three things. How do we know that you are suffering from identity crisis? Number one is what? Two is what? Attitude to rejection. And then three? Attitude to people's success. When you know who you are in Christ, I am one with the Lord. I'm seated above. I have what Christ have. Waiting with the quarrel now. Waiting with the drag. The sister I want to get. Now Jesus get them. I go talk to them. He go arrest that, Jesus, that girl in the night. I say, oh girl, follow my son. Peace. Peace. What are we dragging for goodness sake? Are you with me at all? Mm. I know who I am. Don't just sing it. Sing it with lights. With revelation. Give me that scripture as I um, begin to sum up this message. Maybe I'll give you only three. Or only two. My time is up. Ephesians 1.16. You will go home tonight, oh, you will pray. Open my eyes. Help me to know who I am. I'm one with Christ. Help me to know where I am. I'm above. I'm above. I'm above. Help me to know what I have and what I can do. I think it was Philemon that, the, the, that every good gift in Christ that is also in you if you use the standard of Miss War to look at your face, you will die in depression. You will just die in your room crying and nobody will be there unless Holy Spirit. They say the most beautiful, by what standard? By what standard? By height? Complexion? Face? Oval face? Round face? Square face? Triangular face? By what standard? Cease not to give thanks for you. Make it mention of you, my brothers. Next verse. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, the Father of light, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. Glory. Next verse. The eyes of your heart be flooded with light. Why? So you will know the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense. Next verse. And what the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Nobody, no pastor is blocking down Obu's growth in ministry. No man of God is stopping my ministry. Are you with me? The sky is too wide. Nobody. I serve as I have received grace. Nobody. 
if every church in this city will sit 5,000 every morning, will still have men in their house. Something happened when Seman came for the first time two years ago. That day my son was circumcised. So, so when I brought them home, I was rushing to meet up with the meeting. So while I was driving to Osses Cathedral, heavy traffic along Loloka Road. Heavy traffic. When I got to Osses, everywhere was jammed, outside, inside. Yet, the city did not know. 90 something percent of this city did not know. Same I was in Osses Cathedral. 90 something percent of the city did not know. Do you understand? Because I learned from it. I said, ah! Somebody can see this crowd and be envious for nothing. Let's say 5,000 was there. You Google this, uh, the city population just with your phone. Millions in this land. Millions. You are dying for 3,000. Meanwhile, over a but we have enough customers. Enough. May your eyes open. How do you educate your inner man? Wow. You educate your inner man. Number one, through the word. Through the word. How do you civilize your inner man? You civilize your inner man, number two, by praying in the Holy Spirit. How do you educate your inner man? You educate your inner man through worship and personal fellowship with God. How do you educate your inner man? You educate your inner man through corporate fellowship. Four things. The word of God, Ezekiel 2 and verse 2. The spirit entered my spirit when he spoke unto me. Number two, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 11. By praying in the Holy Ghost, you are educating your inner man. By fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost alone, you are worshiping, you are praising, you are bringing civilization to your inner man, and by corporate fellowship. And I will give you pastors and shepherds that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Four ways you will get your inner man educated and civilized. Stay with the word of the Lord, stay with prayers praying in the Holy Spirit. If you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, I will give you three minutes. It will happen in this service. Pray alone. You are making the inner man strong. You are making the inner man strong. Stay in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes don't read the Bible. Sometimes don't speak in tongues. Just worship God. Worship God. Arrange worship in sequence. You, you get my point now? Let it play. Allow them to play one after the other. Arrange it very well. It's not from spirit to... Mike, sorry. I don't need to call them here. Because we are going global. Say amen. You educate your inner man. Remember where we started. There are things your body needs. Please feed your spirit. Are you with me? Oh. Look at me. You see this? What is the name of this one? Bible, right? It's not old. This is the school, compulsory school. Your spirit man must attend. You don't need cut off mark. You need hunger. You need hunger. No cut off. You don't need to bribe a lecturer. You have the Holy Ghost. Make him a friend. Open down my eyes. That I may behold the wondrous things out of your word. As I open the scripture, let your light shine in my spirit. Let me know who I am. The word of God can, can shrink fear. Shrink fear. A timid you can become a bold you. Audacious you can come out of the word. You are really bold when the word of God makes you bold. You are really strong when the word of God makes you strong. Are you with me? Stay with the word on daily basis. And let me say this because very soon now we'll enter the season of fasting and prayers. For some of you that fast in season anyway. Many of you here, you fast in season. May God help you in Jesus' name. January fasting alone. May God help you. Let's not even go there. 
when you are fasting you are starving the flesh but please don't stab the spirit of this if you want to maybe I will teach on fasting maybe the last one of this month maybe, on seven thousand, maybe, maybe I pray so you cannot be fasting and isolate the word it will not work pray please but the word listen and read are you with me say amen, amen. yes this is how light shines on your inner man <laughs> one of these days you come and I say nobody will kill me it's not the normal nobody will kill me this one is coming from the realm of light one of these days you will say I cannot be poor again <laughs> it's not the normal one you say oh you know I cannot be poor you know it when you say it from the realm of light you will know you say I cannot be barren I cannot be single for none shall lack their mate one day you will find your husband in the Bible believe me the day you will find your husband here you will marry and he made them Adam and he made the male and the, and somebody is telling your mind you will not marry how God you did not make a man a lo, a, a, let's not go into this thing no. <laughs> amen <laughs> Woo! you poor how how tell me how tell me why you should be thinking of poverty I'm thinking of people to hell with my money too rich looking for people that will partake of my riches let me close with this go back to that scripture we read before second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 people of God when you have this issue of identity solved you can go to sleep amen Raise your hand. I need to release this one. It has been coming to my heart and I'll be shifting this because of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Tear the curtain. Tear the veil. Tear the curtain. Tear the veil. The light of God of flashing in someone's spirit. That fear of, of death they will, who will kill you. Who? Born of a woman. Which arm will kill you? Christ in you, Holy Ghost in you, angels around you. See, the angels of God will encamp around them that fears the Lord. You in Christ, Christ in God, who will kill you? He said, we have three witnesses in this earth, three witnesses. We have the blood, we have the water, we have the Holy Ghost. Who will kill you? How would they kill you? You poor, how? How? I asked Jesus, by his mercies, through the Holy Ghost, let light come let light come every fear every fear any sense of rejection every fear in you fear of failing in ministry fear of failing in life fear of i am too old i'm getting old any form of fear in the name of jesus christ and by the holy ghost i command that fear to be drowned right now let light shine in your spirit let light shine in your spirit. Let light shine in your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now be clothed with light in your inner man. Be clothed with sun. Be clothed with light on your inner man. What if I fail my final year exam? That devil is lying to you. Hear you the voice speaking. To what if I did not graduate? How can you graduate? You not graduate how? What if I did not get no? What if I die barren? How can you die barren? These are devils speaking to you. Know who you are. In Christ we have. In Christ we have. In Christ we have. We have peace. We have joy. We have life. We have our in Christ we have. We have in Christ. Therefore, I pray for you. Any fear tormenting your peace tormenting your peace in the name of Jesus the son of God let that fear crush and be crumble now 
Listen to me. Somebody here said, will I end this year like this? How can you end it like this? No, you won't. I'm speaking to you from the realm of light. You will not. You will not. I'm speaking to you from light. A woman clothed with sun, crowned with stars, with moon under her feet. Sing for me this song. How great you are. Sing with me. How great is our God? Lift up your hands. I speak to you in the name of Jesus the Christ right now. You need this one. This is why you came. Habena kosh kila kasila brehetes kambrote sazina koma late bahayadas. In the name of Jesus the Son of God. Anything that is representing darkness in your life, pushing you to an understanding that you will die this year like this, that you end this way like this is not true. Let light shine, 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 let light shine. in the name of Jesus Christ. Let light shine. shine is on your head. I'm telling you how the father of light supplies light. The first place he will supply light is in your inner man giving you the true knowledge of who you are. Identity with Christ. You must capture who you are, where you are, what you have and what you can do. You can test if you are there by checking how you are afraid of the time. Your attitude to know and then when all that will seem to be succeeding around you your reaction. These are the two tests. Then number two, the second place God supplies light is your head. Your head. Job 29 verse 2, your head. The crown of stars on my head. Light can shine on your head. You see, I remember those days quickly. Uh, guys on the media. Jesus can give you light upon your head. Oh, that I wear as in the months past, as in the days when God preserved me. Keep going, keep going. When his candle shined upon my what? My head. And when by his light I walk through darkness. Job was remembering or Job was sharing with us what made him rich, what made him great. Light can shine on your head. Please listen to me everyone. I'm going to compress everything in the next 20 minutes and then I'll pray with you. What a service. This is the light that gives you knowledge. This is where you need the education now. Are you with me? Yes. You need to trust God for education. And when I say education, not just formal education, but informal. Don't be 
In fact, I didn't tell you this, but let me just say it now. That the worst disease me I know is spiritual myopia. Now, but apart from that, another second to spiritual myopia, the first one, is when you are bankrupt of knowledge, especially in your area of calling. In your area of assignments. If you are bankrupt of knowledge, believe me, you are really poor, you need help. I remember those days when the candle of God was upon my head. Are you with me? Two things happen with the light of God on your head. One is knowledge. Two is creativity. Let your light shine on my head, oh God. Next Sunday, I'll be anointing some of you. This thing came to my heart, and I've said it here until the big boss himself said it. That three areas that command, that makes men to prosper, three areas, your head, your hand, and your feet. Let your light shine on my head, Lord. I challenge you, read. This time around, for your inner man, you only need the Bible or Bible-related books for your inner man. Are you with me? The scripture or scripture, what we call spiritual books now. But the light on your head does not only need scriptures. Here you now need physics, chemistry, biology, business, the Depending on your, don't be a novice in your area. Are you with me? Yes, now you are a graduate. What if you are called, required you add MSc, PhD? What are you still waiting for? What are you still waiting for? And don't you give me excuse. I had no formal education. Go and Google a man called Benjamin Franklin. Only two years of formal education. Go and check his history. You have no excuse. If I tell you my story, you will not believe it. You won't believe it. On daily basis, we strive to make sure that the oil of God in us will not look like a small vessel. So we develop intellectually. We watch ourselves. We prune ourselves. We want to get better. We don't only read Bible. We listen to news. We learn grammar. Oh yes, we do. We learn English. Learn new words, how to use them on a daily basis. Don't just come here. We are a global ministry. Are you with me? Light of God on your head. Be knowledgeable. Nobody is permitted to be an illiterate. Not in 21st century. Not with iPhone. Not with Android phone. Nobody. And Moses was educated in all the wisdom of Egypt. I think the scripture is here. Acts what now? Acts 7, 22. The guy was educated. Paul was educated. Don't quote Peter, quote Paul. Peter was a fisherman. You are hiding your ignorance. Paul was an intellectual, a good, a genius. Sound in knowledge. And you can see the gap. Work on yourself. Work on yourself. The day he praise the Lord, I have graduated, and we are looking. We are looking at a graduate. Don't tell me English does not matter. If you're frying a cara, you can still be knowledgeable. It doesn't matter what you do. You can be hawking up and still be knowledgeable. Let the man with jeep buying up and know that you are well far more above the but you are selling intellectually. Let people interact with you and see a genius and they cannot associate what you are selling with who you are. Distinguish yourself with knowledge. I read yesterday. I read today. I will read tomorrow. <laughs> we don't brag. I was somewhere not too long ago. So I ministered. Someone said, hey! You know, if you're with a child and the child is growing, you really can know. Until someone who saw the child three years ago, hey, you are this too big. So they was, ah, say, you have so changed. I said, how? He began to enumerate. My friend said this. He said, I said, I know. Me, I know I'm changing. It's not pride. 
I know I'm getting better by the day. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Global stage is coming. I don't want to fall your hands. And fall the hands of my God. Say amen. amen. I want to make Jesus and you proud. Can I hear your amen? amen. So you make us proud. Say amen. amen. Don't be it. You can still be speaking in tongues, sound and knowledge. If you check the people you follow on social media, I don't have time for you today. I don't have time for you today. I want to talk with you and see someone. You have the brain, no? It's so that you are playing. You have it's more brain matter. Stretch this thing called brain. Are you with me? I may not know. You've heard me say this all the time, and I'll keep saying it. You can call it anything you like. I may not know everything, but this thing I am doing, ba. You raise anything you want us to share on this. We start. We start it here. You raise any topic, eschatology, pneumatology, whatever theology. You raise it here. Are you with me? It's not boasts. It's something I do consciously. Be ready to provide answers to anyone who will ask a question concerning the faith you believe in. If you ask me about tithe, we'll start teaching on tithe. Here. Don't be dull. Don't be lazy. You can do online program. Are you with me? You can do online program. You can do six weeks program. You can do one year program. You can do eight months program. You can still be a businessman. I keep saying this. I read more when I was in business than now. Because I had more time that time. Now you're preaching every day. Now you're, you have children. Now you have all of that. As a businessman, I read more than because I had all the time that time. Studying like a mad person. I God knew I never knew I'm gonna become a preacher. I will travel abroad, I will pack books every day, reading, studying. I never knew I was opening something in my brain. We are not done yet. Are you with me? We are sharpening this axe so because the ends of the earth will receive Christ through this axe. Are you with me? No, we are not. You may not see me in your school as a student, but I will come as a lecturer. <laughs> Number what now? <laughs> you hear me, right? So I will be in your school, outside your school. Attend lectures with you. What can you not study now online? What is that thing? How to be fluent in English is here. Mathematics is here. People only go to school for certificate's sake. You can learn here. You only go just to endorsement. For knowledge is here. What is not here? You only browse boobs and bombs. That's your problem. Tiny one and big one. God help us. Say amen. amen. You will come back next year ten times better. Amen. So we we'll trust God for creativity number two. Creativity like um, Bezreel and Aholiab, right? Exodus 31, 2 and 6. So this one can come through in pattern. We'll put this one here, right here. The light of God can shine my brethren. Every entrepreneur, every businessman, we will need this light. Are you with me? The hand of Seth have I holding. I will go ahead of Cyrus. See, I will level his mountain. I will make his crooked path straight. I will lift up his valley. I will cut asunder the bars of iron. I will give him treasures of darkness and riches in secret places. God can give men light. Isaac, no, and Jacob, wake up. Go get chestnut tree. Kill off the back, put in the water. When they come to drink, after being on the sun, then ah, creativity that goes to men, empowering them for prosperity. Tonight I will pray for you. You lay your hand on your head, do. 
tonight, when the time comes, in the next five, ten minutes, you say, God, open this brain, put in something here, put in something here. This is how we prosper in this 21st century. Lord, it might be what we are doing, do it in a different way. It might be what we are doing, add this and subtract this. It might be what we are doing, but move 10 inches backward or forward. It might be go left, go right. By all means, light will come to your head. Oh, I remember the days when the candle of the Lord was on my head. And that woman was crowned with stars on your head. Lord, I cannot be poor in this wealthy world. Nigeria is too rich. Over 200 million people. And I'm looking for customers. Mba, no, no. Do you know half percent of Nigerian population becoming your customers? We are not here. One percent of 200 is how many? One percent. Eh? Two million, right? Half percent of two million is what? If you have one million customers, are you here? You think it's cheap? Half percent of Nigerian population, quarter percent of Nigerian population patronizing what you do. My brother, my sister, creativity must hit your head. It must hit your head. Are you with me? We have glow. We have MTN. We have ether. They are all billionaires in dollars. All of them. All of them. All of them. You don't need everybody. Half percent of Nigerian population patronizing you, my sister. You will sponsor your next year. Sack next year. Say amen. I'm talking to you now. You have to. You have to. Let your mind open light in your brain. You can be sleeping and boom. Like in a dream of the night, you wake up. And you will shout, I have gotten it finally. You can be driving, it will drop. Maybe you are taking your showers. Start this. Remove this. Go here. Start this. Like joke, like joke. Ten persons become twenty. Twenty become hundred. And you'll be coming here every Sunday smiling to the glory of God. Are you with me? I will not say to keep your hand on your head. The grace is just here right now. Your mind must open. There must be light on your head. Light on your head. Light on your head. Light on your head. For creativity. For strategy. When the candle of the Lord was upon my head, I became rich, said Job. Because the candle of the Lord was upon my head. We are entrepreneurs. I don't care if you are a student. I don't care if you are a businessman. I don't care. Let light shine on your head. You can be a pastor. You need creativity. You can be a student. You need creativity. Open down my brain. Put like you put in a, a holy up in Basira. The spirit of wisdom, of creativity. Come upon me. Come upon me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Let the light that hit the head of men come upon you in Jesus' name. Time will fail me. How do you get this? One of the major ways is meditation. Meditation. This creative, please, help me. Like a woman will donate her womb to receive a seed. Donate your mind to the Holy Ghost using meditation. Please, can I beg you this? Wake up in the night. I know you will pray. Please pray. Read your Bible. But by all means, take 20 minutes. Meditate. Keep your eyes on your business, your mind there. And be praying or be worshiping. Be thinking of that. Are you getting me? You are thinking of the business. This is how I prepare my own message. If I receive a word, I will pray. After praying, Father of light, Father of light. I'm walking, I'm driving, Father of light. Holy Ghost, how do we go on Sunday? Where do we go? How, where do I start? Before you know it, you are taking your showers. A will come. B, how do you think I am manifesting this? Through meditation. Are you with me? Don't just pray alone in the night. I say night because of the calm atmosphere. Sometimes you wake up, worship, be looking. 
if you sleep, wake up several ways. Sometimes from meditating, you go to sleep, and here comes a dream. And here, are you getting me? Don't be afraid that you fall asleep. As you're thinking about how to do it better, go to bed, sleep. You might wake up with an answer that will forever eliminate poverty in your lineage. This is your testimony in this week. Meditation. Quiet moment in your mind. Don't always be noisy. Every time noisy music, every time. No! Sometimes come everywhere. Quiet in the environment. Walk around by 2 a.m. Um, nothing drop on Monday. No, come back on Tuesday. If it takes you 21 days to get one idea, it's worth it. If it takes you 30 days to get one idea, your brain is locked up with possibility. And the Holy Ghost will unlock them in this season. I didn't hear your amen. I will close with the last one. Light on your face. You will like this one. John didn't see this, but I saw this one. Light on your spirit, man. Light on your head. Then light on your inner man. Please say amen. Psalm 44 and verse 3. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this house with our Father's glory. Bless me, bless Set our Send forth your light. Forth your word and let that be light. For FDM did not get their land in their position by their own sword, neither by our own arm, but the right hand and thy arm, O God, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast favored us. Look at me everywhere. Light can shine on your inner man. We call it revelational knowledge. Light can shine on your head. We call it knowledge and creativity. Light can shine on your face. We call it favor. Are you with me? Everyone listen to me. You need this one. I will close with this one. I will not talk on your feet again. Listen to me everyone. When your inner man is clothed, when your head is filled with creativity, you may be shocked that you know what you know how to do what you're doing, but you lack the favor to attract the kind of men. Look at me, everyone. Are you aware? Are you aware? King, a beautiful lady is a beautiful lady. Say amen. amen. Are you angry? Eh? A beautiful girl is a beautiful girl. From her little childhood, Neymaka, you look pretty. Is it, is it correct? Many guys will like her. But believe me, Amen. No, everybody will like her. Everybody has been telling Esther, You look pretty. You look beautiful. I like you. I will marry you. Some mothers, but have you married Esther for their sons? Amen. Like Munye Mwam. Is that correct? But my brother, we will need King Ahasuerus to like Esther. You have heard apostles say it over time that who likes you matters a lot. Esther chapter 2 and verse 9. Oh God, let your light shine on my face. Are you with me? On the face of my business, on the face of my career, on the face of four dimension ministry, I have your light in my spirit. I think I have your light on my head. I have created a business by creativity. I have started a program by the knowledge. But Lord, I need some people to like what I'm doing. It's not what you are doing is good. Who is saying it? Who is saying it? Everybody will say, girl, you look good. It who endorses what you do matters. Don't pretend about it. Is somebody hearing me? Look, give me the scripture. Esther 2 and verse 9. My people, are you there? I'm talking about people here. The Holy Ghost is saying, my light will shine on your face. Are you here? Shine your light on the face of my destiny. On the face of my ministry. On the face of my career. 
we'll be praying from here. It's a good time to begin to open up your spirits because this light will come in three ways into your spirits, upon your head, and upon your face. You can know how to do what you're doing, but you still need the light of God to shine on your face. You can have knowledge and skill to do well what you do, but my brother, you will need this light that shines on your face. Do you know why? Many people may know what to, how to do what you're doing. Sometimes better than you. Don't tell me that Esther was not the only pretty girl. Tommy Tenny told us that by study over 1,000 ladies outsourced from different regions came together, the whole world, the advantage now will not only be beautiful or beauty. Beauty brought them together, but something must distinguish them. It is called the light of his countenance shining upon people that will distinguish skill from another. We can learn skill together from a different, from the same company, but something from heaven must shine on my face. Do you know I do this? I lay hand on my face. I say, Lord, you know I carry your favor. Anyone who sees me today will favor me. I am not carnal. If you don't have favor, it will be a labor. You can be beautiful and forgive me with due respect. Let me not say non-entities. Some certain persons will only admire your beauty. I want her guy to like me. I want a hat Zaros to like what I'm doing. Are you hearing me? I am not being carnal. Look at this. And the made them please him and she obtained kindness of him. Go back now. And he speedily gave her the things for what? Purification. Shall speedily. Please look up. Are you here? We want to close now. Oh, look, look at this everyone. Do you know I used to preach? Many of us. And it is true but not completely. I used to preach that the essence of the one year purification, six months of, of oil smearing with me and then sweet fragrance six months. After the one year, Esther began to obtain favor. It was not actually so. Before the purification started, the person that will purify them, train them, um, hey guy, the eunuch here, the person before the purification of face started or starts, Esther obtained favor. Do you understand? As in, before the things that will make them look good to meet the king even start, which means without makeup, they still like him. Do you understand? The man that will, because you come in as a lady, they will give you your purification materials and assign you a, um, a quarter. I said, this is your place. But when they saw her, she came with seven medians. Bible said, and they gave to Esther the best place. She is now the best place of the house of women. Even before they started painting their face. It is good to paint face. But something can be on your face more than foundation more than powder. It is called the light of his countenance. Let it shine on my face, dear Lord. Dear Lord. Look at verse 15. The same chapter, verse 15. And Esther obtained favor in the presence of everyone. Please shout everyone. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihai, uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king, she required nothing but what Hegai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Please shout all. Say it again. It is true, something can come on your face. And every customer that needs what you are selling, we want to patronize you. It is possible. Let your light shine on my face, oh God. Here comes my prayer point as we pray. Are you, are you, are you, are you with me? Everybody here needs to pray. I know you know how to do what you do very well. So beyond skill, can your light shine on me, Lord? Do you know many people who know what they do very well? Haven't you seen skillful people? How many of you have gone to football pitch 
and you watch some guys play and you know they play better than people you watch on television screen is it true you say why this guy here haven't you watched some person's minister and you say how come this guy is talented and gifted how come nobody is hearing him that will have brought me to number four the light on your leg is talking about visibility the global visibility because moon represents the world but before your feet let's talk about your face i cannot be gifted and not be noticed listen we don't struggle for place but let the light of god shine upon you now i come Connect you to our month of joy and favor. You see, right now it is December, our month of favor. That something can come from heaven caused light. It can shine on an individual and you will carry favor. They may not like your height, but they cannot help it but favor you. They may not like your stature, but they cannot help it but being compelled to favor you. Let your light, oh God, not stop on my head. Now I am creative, but I need to be favored. Now I am talented, but I need to be favored. I know you received light some time ago. You have started a business, my brother. It came through light on your head. But now we want to put some light on that thing you do. Where are businessmen here? You will need some light on your business. Let it shine on my face. They got not the land by their sword. They got not the shop with their money. I don't want to become a husband snatcher. I want to become a husband attractor. I want to attract men and not snatch other boys. I want to attract them by favor. Oh God, what happened to Esther that even before purification, hey, light came on her. Where is your business? Can you carry the faith of your business right, right now? That business, Lord, let your light shine. You can shine on your face. On that company, let your light shine. He says she obtained favor in the presence of all that father of light. Come, 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 come. Shine on my face. Look at me here. Listen, listen, listen. Kabaladoski tabahadaya. It is not carnality when you say, Lord, I'm made in your image. Shine your light here. Men will look at me and like me and to marry me. You are not being carnal. Are you with me? You are not being carnal. You can, do you know you can be a good girl with good character? And men, people are not seeing the product to carry. Something more shallow. And some, a beautiful girl serving the Lord. There is such a thing as a veil. But I bring you a word. On this mountain, I will tear down the covering cast over you. He said, Lord, will turn that covering cast over you. I don't want to become Jacob. Look at what veil can do. Cover a girl. Seven years of much hard labor. But let your light shine on my face oh God. I know you are a student. He can shine on you. No lecturer. We mess up with your papers. Nobody. Nobody. Three things you are praying now. Let your light shine on my inner man. Let your light shine on my head. Let your light shine on my face. If you read verse 17 of Esther chapter 2. The Bible says that Esther obtained favor looking at the king. People of God, look at progression. First, favor before her guy. Second level, favor before all men. Final level, favor before King Ahasuerus. Many of you, you are in first level. You need second level. Many of you, you are in second level. But I want a king to patronize what you do. I want a king to like what you're doing. I want a king to refer you. Kings only have friends of kings. I want them to know that you're doing what you're doing. To patronize you and then tell their co-kings, fellow kings, that you do what you do. This is not carnality. The lie that, and when Esther entered the palace, protocols was not observed. Nobody was asking her, who brought you in here without official invitation? It is called the light of his countenance. Shine your light upon my face. I am educated. I made it in my academics. I am a businessman. 
all men will like me. I show you three levels of light. One, Hagar, the purifier. Two, all men. Three, king. One king can rewrite the history of your life. Who is patronizing you, sir? Who are the men that come? of revelation clothe me with light on my body let my head be crowned with stars and let my face radiate with light someone is praying you will have two minutes to pray now you will have two minutes to pray now father of lights supply light supply lights supply light is a good time to pray everyone if you are online join us and pray right now if you're online, pray. The light of God can shine on your inner man. The light of God can shine on your head. He can shine on your face. Don't be shy. Pray. Daughters of Zion, pray. Sons of God, pray. Light on my face. Light on my inner man. Light on my head. Is someone praying? Is someone praying? You have two minutes more. Signs on the me. light of Jesus shine. Signs on me. Shata kopereta ketozi abahatash. Shine upon my works. Shine upon my businesses. Le kopere kata abahatash. Ezo zisa 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 zisa. A kopere kata kata kopere kata bahala ravasha das. A la kopere kata kato zisa zia na mahatavash. Your grace is there. Shine on me, shine on me, shine on me, shine on me. Is your grace? Pray this way. Psalm forty-four by, th by verse three. When I read the Bible, I pray the scripture. You can call it any name. Some buy land with money. Some buy with favor. Pray this way. Lord, I receive this by favor. I receive this by favor. You know what you're trusting God for. Are you with me? I receive a new shop by favor. I receive a new land by favor. I receive academic whatever. I receive, I receive I re by favor. I don't know how to drag men and women. I receive by favor. I receive a new house by favor. I receive FDM. We receive a landed property by favor. Are you praying? Pray this way. By the light of your countenance shining on me. Call them by their names. For dimension ministry, we grow by favor. For dimension orca, we grow by favor. Ibarium, we grow by favor. Uli, we grow by favor. Oko, Kingdom Invaders mandates, you grow by favor. Obaru Center, Omaba Center, businessmen, entrepreneurs, we rise by favor. We rise by favor. Young ladies, Jesus will settle you in your husband's house by favor. Are you praying? For this will close by favor. Prince Dan grows by favor. Testy Heart grows by favor. Stalwarts, Stalwart grow by favor. Call your company name. Call your ministry. My ministry grows by favor. The light of your countenance shine upon me. Shine upon me. I graduate by favor. I gain admission by favor. I graduate by favor. I gain admission by favor. Not by labor. Is someone praying? Two minutes more. Two minutes more. Shine on me your lights. Shine on me your lights. I don't want to walk in darkness. I don't want to walk in darkness. Deliver me from spiritual myopia. Deliver me from spiritual myopia. Open down my eyes. Let the curtains be torn. Let the veil be torn. Let the curtains be torn. The angel of light will soon be here. He will soon be here. Open the 
eyes of my heart. Open my heart. Open my eyes. Kaperatatos. Shine on my head. Shine on my feet. A samba on my face. Let it shine. Let it shine. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Our time is gone. I want to release you now. What a sight. What a message. What an insight. Father of light can literally clothe men with light. Starting from your inner man. You have understanding of who you are. Then come on your head. Giving you knowledge. Creative ideas. On your face. Giving you favor. On your feet. Giving you global visibility. Global visibility. Baba Komeleti Sakara Toba. Hai Komendeti Kaba. We welcome the angel of lights. We welcome the angel of lights. We welcome the angel of lights. He is here. He is here. He is here. The God who met Jacob in the night and told him, Take an almond tree. He is here. The God who met Paul. Many of you need power for ministry. Light of God communicates power. It will enter your spirit. You will carry power when light enters you. Many of you, what you need is clothing on your inner man. I cannot be naked. I cannot be naked on my inner man. The angels of light are here. Father of light. Father of light. Father of light. Who among you need to be empowered on your inner man? On your inner man. Abba. So I raised my hand and I asked the God of my covenant, the very Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, over this congregation, my left and my right and my center, anywhere you are, the light of Jesus, it must shine on your inner man. Hey! And the Spirit entered me. He can enter a man and set me on my feet. I was lying down weak, but the Spirit entered me and set me on my feet. I come with light of Yahweh from the throne of light. I move by light. I communicate light into your spirit. Every weakness, every darkness, every weakness, dizziness, lousiness, I come by light. May the God who shone out of darkness shine into your heart to give you the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Now be clothed. Now be clothed. Now be clothed with light. I bring the garment of light. You are not less than 18. You are not less than 18. It will come as a garment. It will happen once. At least one eight, 18 persons. Garment of light. Garment of light. You can't stand it. Some will shout. Some will run. Some will jump. Some will be slayed. But by all means, it's a heavy garment. It's a heavy garment. Precious Holy Spirit. You are the real custom of light. With God's angels here. Angels of light. I ask in the name of Jesus. Over this 18 brethren and more. Right now as I count three. Put on them. Clothe them like that woman. In chapter 12 of Revelation. With light. On their inner man. On their head. On their faces. Right in their feet. Right now. In the name of Jesus. One receive light. Be cluttered with light. Online. Offline. I speak. Please help her. Help them. Two, eighteen of you. Garment of light. Garment of light. Shine upon you. Yeah, it's still coming. It's still coming. It's still coming. In the name of Jesus Christ. The light of God. 
from the royal throne of Jesus. Come upon men and women. Hey! Yes. Now begin to receive now. Bring it down. Now begin to receive. Begin to receive. Receive light. Be decorated. They will put it on you. The angels that decorated that woman is here. No more darkness. No more struggle. Holy Spirit, perfect this work. Let the curtain be torn. Let the veil be torn. Draw men in. Draw men in. Draw men in. Into lights. <laughs> number three. And my final number. Light shining in your heart. On your face. On your head. Right on your feet. Oh, Jesus. The light of God upon us yes you are being clothed with your heavenly body you see what will happen fear is going fear is going you are becoming big on your inside now place your hand on your on your head I must stop you from here. Ha! Next Sunday, ba? Oh my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Every good and perfect gift coming down from above. From the Father of light in whom there is no shadow of turning. Source and sustainer of light. You cannot have good product and bad customers. No. You are skillful. You are talented. You are hardworking. Something that came upon Esther must come upon you. And if you are in this house, Esther chapter 2, 9, 15, 17 should be your testimony. Everyone who sees me favors me. It's no longer a secret. It's no longer a secret. You see it happen. You see me, you favor me. It, it is a tribe thing. It's a tribe thing. You cannot be struggling. No. 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 They will discuss what to do in the king. Apostle told us that this guy interpreted the dream of three persons. One person, fellow prisoner. Second person, fellow prisoner. He remained in the prison until he interpreted the dream of a king. The same gift of interpretation, what differs the person he interpreted dream for. The same anointing that interpreted for the fellow prisoner. This, no more, the same grace. What changed? The same preaching you are preaching. Who are you preaching to? The same thing you are selling. Who are you selling to? The same thing. He became a prime minister. Baba Kumehila Tako Mahasya. Your hands on your head. Let it shine. Lord, from this lineage, from my dear father in the Lord to my dear spiritual mentor, this grace runs in our bloodline. Light on your face. Are you a minister of the gospel? Are you an entrepreneur? Are you a businessman? Are you a student? Let the light of Jesus shine right now Esther 2 verse 9 Esther 2 verse 15 Esther 2 verse 17 becomes a reality in your life you watch it 35 of you in this season you rise by favor as your amen comes like thunder the land the land the land people buy with money own it by favor the housemen get by labor, get by favor. The contracts, the contracts, people win by bribing. 
you receive by favor the light in your spirit the light on your head the light on your face and above all I struck my hand finally you are a city set on a hill say thy word is a lamp unto my feet I place you right now whatever you do let that thing be on the scale and on the height where all men will gravitate towards your direction they say all men seek you he didn't invite them something in him the light of for dimension ministry may the light of God rest upon you such that north south east and west the light in them will begin to pull men men and women will be all men poor rich educated non-educated they will begin to gravitate towards this ministry towards your life shout favor three times number two and number three as you raise up your hand i declare welcome to december welcome to december you are months of joy and favor glory glory it is for you joy and favor it is for you joy and favor it is for you joy and favor the sister that led us in talking session she said even up to 1159 31st of december you heard her supernatural harvest will still be speaking i decree i declare from here to 1159 31st of december 2023 the car can still be bought the house can still be built the music can still be done the land can still be bought. You can still buy a land in this in these remaining months. I'll be, I'll be weeks or days. I stretch my hand through lights, through illumination, through favor. May the remaining weeks, remaining days, remaining hours and minutes be flooded with light and favor. Come on, let your amen be loud and better. Can we shout glory? Hallelujah. Keep standing. Don't move an inch. Keep standing. God bless you. We honor our online audience. God bless them. Can we celebrate our online audience? Hallelujah.